Okay, guys. I'm trying something new today, believe it or not. I'm trying something new today. On StreamYard, you can live stream on multiple platforms. I'm actually live streaming on my Rumble account. I got to go see if it's working. Hold on. So let's see. Let me see something. I'm going to have to check it out. One second. Check it out, man. Check it out. Rumble. Rumble in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. We got something. So I'll be live streaming in all three of these places, but I don't know. How does that work? I don't see it. How would I find it? If I'm going live. Hmm. It doesn't show on Rumble. Is there a way to know if I'm live on Rumble? Because it says that I'm connected on StreamYard, but I don't see it. See, Rumble is not as easy to navigate. What's up, Sargandi? I don't know. Joe, are you that uh, Sabbatarian uh, demon who thinks you know scripture? Here, come on. Don't manifest because I'm going to muzzle you for the glory of Christ. Here you go, Joe, if that's you. If you're that same son of Satan. So there you go. Click on it. We got a Sabbatarian who thinks he knows the Bible. So let me deal with him real quick. So click on only him. So come on so we can show you don't know the Bible. So, guys, I guess. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Anna? Yeah. Is that him? Is that that Sabbatarian heretic, tool of Satan? Let's see. We got a lot to cover, guys. Like I said, it's Saturday. I'm still not fully 100%. I wanted to go hiking and exercise, but I still feel my body's weak. So show up, buddy. <clears throat> Hopefully you won't manifest. Lord, the bounce of spirit. No, he's, yeah, he's one of these guys, loudmouth. <clears throat> Talks tough. Hit the like button, subscribe, invite folks. What's up, Sargon? Do you what it is? Pray I'm fully recovered. I need to start doing cardio. I haven't been able to because I don't feel 100%. So I need to, though, by the grace of God. Glory to the fallen the spirit. Yeah, here you go. Uh, this is why they're telling you, buddy, because they're telling you to get out of here. Come on, Joe. We're waiting. I just gave you the link. Let's try it again. Don't waste time. Come on up. Let's see how much you know the Bible. So, guys, we got some guys who think they know scripture. <clears throat> now, I guess I'm not live streaming on Rumble, huh? Oh, we are having trouble streaming. This is possible. Series. Okay, let me just remove it then. All right. Yeah, it's not on Rumble. Forget about it. It's not working. That's why. Yeah, it's not working on Rumble yet. Not yet, anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Okay, we're waiting for this man to show up. Come on, Joe. You got the link. Yeah, my account. I'll get you the link in a minute. Okay. Welcome, everyone. We got a lot to discuss. I got clips to play. I got testimony to share again, and I got today. Thank you, Carolina. How you doing? Oh, oh. Oh, then why are you saying, where can you call, man? I'm thinking you're that Sabbatarian, that Sabbath guy who wants to debate me, Joe. All right, remove the link then. No one click on that link. I thought he's that Sabbatarian guy wants to challenge me. See, this is what happens. Where do I call? Call for what? See? See? That's what happens. Guys, let me remind you the rules again because I'm going to start blocking people before we start. Number one, you're not going to bring up relevant issues. You're not going to sit in judgment on, on us thinking you're better than us, more spiritual than us, holier than us. Okay, you're not going to think that you're more pious than us and you know Jesus better than us. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you're not going to ask irrelevant questions. You're not going to ask irrelevant questions. Number two. Number three, you're going to focus on me, engage on me, trusting the spirit to work through me and that. I may be his mouthpiece in Jesus' name, all right? I may be his mouthpiece in Jesus' name, all right? And so let the Spirit work through me to help you. Do not change subjects. Do not ask relevant questions. Do not chime in and do not post verses. If you disrespect the rules, that means you're saying you want me to disrespect you. You want me to sin and cuss you out. 
and humiliate you, which I will. I'm going to do that. I'm letting you know. I'm warning you. So you see, guys, it's a pattern, right? I try to be fair and Christ-like. I tell them the rules, but they come and disrespect anyway because they want to be disrespected. So I will disrespect you. So with that said, we're going to begin, right? Okay. So everyone, let the Spirit work through me. We invite the Holy Spirit, beseech the Holy Spirit. He takes over the session. He takes over the ministry. He takes over my channels. He owns us fully and possesses us and seals us for the glory of the Lord. Closing the doors of censorship, opening door blessing. We are his disciples. May I be his mouthpiece and may he give us strict discipline spiritually and physically. Energize us, empower us, reinvigorate us, rejuvenate us, replenish us, <clears throat> revive us, regenerate us and our loved ones. In my case, my daughters, their mother as well, to fear the Lord. And we ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen my throat, my heart, my lungs, my chest, my arteries with the health I need. Make my voice pleasing to your ears and give me the strict discipline to get healthier, not be vain about it. And use my health to glorify Jesus Christ and build up the church. May the Holy Spirit perfect our sight spiritually and physically and give us illumination to plunge the depth of Scripture, feast on the meat of Scripture. May the Holy Spirit seal us to practice what we preach, to be doers of the Word, destroy the beams in our eyes, destroy hypocrisy from us, save us from living double lives, and may the Holy Spirit never allow us to succumb to temptation, to lust, to scandal, and never prostitute ourselves for numbers, for money, for fame, but make us men and women of integrity and at the same time polit politically incorrect. May the Holy Spirit control our tongues and our mouths, guard our tongues and our mouths. And I pray that for our loved ones, my daughters, even their mother. To them, which are deny, shame the Lord Jesus Christ and destroy every form of blasphemy and idolatry, setting us free from bondage to the flesh, to crucify the flesh, destroying the fruits of the flesh, overcoming the world and crushing Satan on our feet by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, empowered by the Spirit. May the Holy Spirit... <clears throat> bless the inner connection on your visual qualities <clears throat> and grant us the discipline to stay focused and attentive and destroy all distractions of Satan, muzzle the dogs of Satan, chasten them and teach them fear of the Lord. And may the Holy Spirit make us doers of the word, that I will live the words I proclaim and that I never get puffed up and the Spirit have mercy on us, be patient with us, forgive us when we succumb <clears throat> and crucify our weaknesses and our bondage to certain <clears throat> vices. In my case, lust and food may set us free and empower us. And may the Holy Spirit also teach us how to praise the Lord, how to pray to the Lord, how to glorify the Lord, how to sing praises to the Lord, how to study the word, live out and obey the word, how to serve one another, and give us the discipline to get to the church more faithfully. I need that grace. And may destroy the beams in my eyes and all our eyes so we can be doers of the word. We need you, Holy Spirit. Give me the power to practice what I preach. All of us. And we ask the Holy Spirit to give us the greatest gifts in the sight of our God. Faith in our God. Hope in our God. Love for our God. And that love being proven by obedience to the scriptures and serving one another. I ask the Holy Spirit. To own all that we have, especially our money, and use our money to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And may he be glorified and strengthen me, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat and help me, Holy Spirit. Destroy our pride, arrogance, ego, our fake piety, humility, fake humbleness, and fake spirituality. And help me with my low self-esteem. And help me not to be afraid of things that have no meaning but to fear you. Strengthen us. We need you. And beatify us with the beauty of Jesus Christ. And help me not to come into bondage to obesity, gluttony, and lust. But to be set free that we are enslaved to the Father, to the Son, to you, and to your word, to righteousness. You speak through me. Grant me perfect recall of every jot to the portion of Scripture. Destroy all forgetfulness. Destroy sin and error in us. And muzzle these dogs and crush their mouths and teach them to fear the Lord until they repent. And I pray I'm not a nuisance to my neighbors. Bless them that they see Jesus in us. For the glory of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Okay, now. Now, are we ready? 
We're going to begin by playing some clips. All right? By playing some clips. Lord willing, pray for me to be fully recovered. Even though I'm 99%, I still feel a little drained where I can't do cardio. So this is why the Lord's will be done. I was going to go do cardio, but I wasn't feeling that well. I mean, well enough to do cardio, so I'm here. And what better way than to spend time together glorifying Jesus Christ and get to church? Pray for me. Lord willing, by Wednesday, I want to get to the Eucharist, if the Lord wills, by his grace and mercy, if not tomorrow. So, And don't forget your sister Nina. Tomorrow's a big day for her. Tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of her sons entering the presence of Lord Jesus Christ. And yet she's still here worshiping Jesus. Pray for her and her children. The Lord preserve them and empower them to remain faithful until she, she sees her son again. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. All right. I'm going to play some clips. You ready? Yeah, I know. Well, I, I'm under the weather, David. You know the rules, right? You know the rules. Focus on me. Let the Spirit teach. Then we'll begin the Lord's Prayer. All right. Let me share what was sent to me. It seems like she's a charismatic Catholic. By the way, I don't know if you know this. The Catholic Church has one of the largest charismatic movements in the world because the Catholic Church does not believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are no longer operative. That's why in the Catholic Church you have visionaries. People see visions. That's why you have apparitions, miracles, because the gifts of the Holy Spirit have not ceased. And I think she is a Catholic charismatic because she sent me this. Can I read it? Juju, ask me if I'm Orthodox again, and I will become Mormon. Okay? I'll become Mormon. If you're Orthodox, I'll become Mormon. Okay, Juju? Juju, I'll become Mormon. Why are you worried about me being Orthodox? I'm sorry. Right? I'm spoken for. Sorry, people, I'm spoken for. I know you're saying, are you Orthodox? Because I can only more Orthodox. I'm spoken for. Take it easy. I'm off the market, okay? Okay? You listening to me? Sam's spoken for. He's off the market. It's between me and the Lord. Shh. All right, anyway. Let me read what was sent to me. You ready? I believe she's Catholic charismatic. Magic underwear, huh? Good. It's what she sent to me on Facebook Messenger. She sent this to me on Facebook Messenger. All right, yeah. Get rid of the people who are going to ask me questions. Get them the hell out of here. Okay, look what she said to me. This is why I decided to play these clips. Two Jewish individuals, a Jewish man who became Catholic, who saw the Blessed Mother, and a Jewish woman who had a near-death experience whose testimony I played millions of times. Okay, ready for me to read this? Are you ready for me to read this? Here it is so you don't think I'm lying. It's right there. You don't think I'm lying. You ready? Okay, let me read it for you. It had to do with me again, a dream with me. I don't know. All right. All right, right here. Sam, brother, forgive me as this may seem a little crazy. I am not sure if you are aware of the spiritual charism of the Holy Spirit. No, I'm, I'm stupid. Protestant believer is the only one who's aware about them. But many Christians are now being equipped with visions, prophecies, dreams, etc. Yeah, that's true. Well, we've been witnessing it here on the channel, right? He wants to pour it out on the people. Now look, it's what she says to me. I saw in a dream that you will be reaching out to Arabs as well. Okay, now here's the part that really touched me. I see you preaching in love. You mean I'm not loving? I see you preaching in love. Holy Spirit wants to lead you more through this. Now watch here. This is where it touched me. This will win souls. You are a Marian. You are a Marian. Meaning Mother Mary always took a special interest in you. Man, you guys don't know how much I love the, the Blessed Mother. And I'm going to remind you of my story again. We got a long night, about three, four hours, if the Lord is pleased to use me and strengthen me. Give me discipline to stay off from the cheat day. Not now, Lord. Please help me. 
You are a Marian, meaning Mother Mary always took a special interest in you before you even knew that. There's a powerful presence of Our Lady. Yeah, she's definitely Catholic. Of Our Lady with you. She's working powerfully through you to bring others to Jesus. Yeah, she's definitely Catholic, Catholic charismatic. Brother, please look into the supernatural giftings of the Holy Spirit. Encounter ministry works with the supernatural gifts of the apostles to convert people. It's Catholic. Yeah, see? Yeah, she is Catholic then. I didn't read it all the way through thoroughly. The video I sent is of Divine Retreat Center. Yep, priest. See? See, if I had read it all the way through, I'd have been smart. See, I'm stupid, dude. But here's the part I want to read again. You are a Marian, meaning Mother Mary always took a special interest in you before you even knew it. There's a powerful presence of Our Lady with you. She's working powerfully through you to bring others to Jesus. Now, you guys have witnessed that, right? Have you witnessed it? You remember that Muslima who's now a Catholic who got baptized into the Catholic Church? When she reached out to me, she had dreams of Mary, three of them. And Mary told her, go to Shamoon. That's one. And you remember the Mormon who reached out to me? The Mormon who reached out to me just last week. And he told us about his dream where he saw Mary cleaning the path. And she heard the voice of Jesus speaking audibly saying to him to her asking her what are you doing because i'm cleaning i'm cleansing the path to bring him to you do you remember that south asian family the man and the family who all became catholic because their young daughter would have visions of mary do you remember that one too this is why jamila muhammad white antonia dodgers they hate me because they think i'm now into goddess worship but they don't know that, according to them, their God predestined us for his greater glory. Right? You're seeing that, right? So it's it's happening a lot. Now, let me share you my story with the Blessed Mother. Are you ready? So I can remind you of my history. I want to share, share Roy Schumann's testimony and then the testimony of another Jewish lady. You guys ready, right? You're in the saddle. You're okay with this? I've already lost some subscribers, and I cussed them out. Oh, you're Catholic? Unscribed. I go, well, you're a whore, and your mother's a whore. Go to hell. I don't need you. And by the way, for you, before you slander me, when I say go to hell, I mean go to the Valley of Hinnom, okay? I'm going to prove it to you. Gahinna is from the word Valley of Hinnom, because I know you guys want to say, Sam, I don't see Jesus in you. Why are you sending people to hell? Because it's a great spot to vacation. Gahinna comes from the Hebrew words, Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom. It's actually a place in Israel. So I want all of you to go to hell. Yeah. Uh, Christian Answers. If you don't come up and join me on the stream, I'm going to cuss you out, and I'm going to get YouTube to shut down your stream because I've done hundreds of sessions on that. But you don't have answers because you are a bastard. You don't know scripture. So here, I want you to come up to see if you're going to answer my response to you and my challenges to you, because you're the only one who knows the Bible. We Protestants didn't know the Bible. That's why we became <clears throat> Catholic and Orthodox. Stop manifesting in the comment section, because I will cuss you out and insult you as a spiritual bastard, because you don't know the Bible. You're a fake. Prove me wrong. Come. Because I'm going to show you you don't know the Bible. That's why you shouldn't be answering Christianity, because you're a fake until you repent. And God crush your mouth and protect people from a spiritual bastard like you. Anyway, now here. See, they start manifesting. Now, here you go. Let me show you. The Valley of Hena. Isaiah, I didn't invite you, Isaiah. I'm going to get the Shia to spit on your mother if you don't leave, Isaiah. you got five seconds. One, two, three. Production, they're going to be testing your mother in five seconds. One, two. Three, four, may the Shia find your mother and say another bastard like you. All right, there you go. All right, now here, to prove to you, Hinam, Valley of Hinam. Gehenna comes from this word. See, they're manifesting, guys. No respect for the rules because they don't have respect for their mothers because their mothers don't respect them. Okay, Gehenna, Valley of Hinam, Valley of Rabab is a historic valley. 
See, hell is a historic valley, folks. Why are you getting upset that I'm telling you go to hell? Why are you getting upset that I'm telling you to go to hell? It's an historic valley, dude. You see it on the screen? Let me enlarge it. You see it? You got five seconds, Joe, before I get the she on your mother. One, two, three, four. May the Shia find your mother and sign another bastard like you. All right, there you go, Joe. Anyway, the bastards are manifesting. So, did you catch it? Gahina, the word for hell, because hell is the translate Gahina, is historic valley. It's in the Valley of Hinnom. It's in Israel. So I want every one of you to pack up, book first class, go to hell, and get me a ticket. Now, Christian Answers, I'm going to annihilate you. Get your Bible ready, you filthy dog. Okay, mute yourself. You there? You there? Christian Answers, respond before the Shia come on your mother. Like, oh, I'm here. Why are we hearing people in the background? That is my family. May they leave you sooner than later because you're a Bible pervert. What's your problem with asking Mary to pray? It seems like a form of unnecessary intercession. So in Ephesians 6, 18 and 20, when Paul asked Christians to pray for him, is that unnecessary? No, but how can the dead hear your prayers? Now, that's why you're a stupid bastard. Who told you they're dead? Open up Luke dead 20, 37, 38. Luke 20, 37, 38. See, I told you, you're a dumb bastard. You don't know the Bible. You're a piece of garbage. But go to Luke 20, 37, 38. So let me school you. Because you're the only one who thinks you know the Bible. I pray the Lord saves people from a false teacher like you. You just said they're dead. Jesus says they're alive. So you're a bastard for saying Jesus lied. Open up Luke 20, 37, 38, monkey. Open up, read it for me. And tell your family to go take a vacation on to hell. But even Moses showed the in the burning bush passage that the dead are raised when he called the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For all live to him. So is Abraham dead or alive? Alive. But you said they're dead. To this world, not to God. No, shut your mouth. That's not what he said. You're filthy and you're a liar. Go to Revelation 5.13. You're a lying piece of garbage. You just twisted the scriptures. You know you're a bastard son of the devil. You don't know the Bible, right? That's not what Jesus said. He didn't say they're dead to this world. But go to Revelation 5.13 so I can bear you further in the Bible. May the Lord shut you down and you never teach. And may the Lord save your family from you. Go to Revelation 5.13, monkey. <laughs> Stupid bastard. He doesn't know. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all are in them. Yeah. I'm just reading it out loud because he told us to read it out loud. Yeah, tell me that. I hope that. I hope you're not married. Dude. Make and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. Okay. Now, monkey. John says he heard every creature in heaven, earth, beneath the earth, and in the seas and all of them. How can a man hear everyone at the same time? Monkey, answer me. I don't know. Me. Say it again. I don't know. Okay, then you can you shut up and not challenge me and think you know more than you do? Now go back and listen before I block you. Get out of here. Go watch all right. Soon. Thank okay. you. Okay, God bless you. Now I'm going to be nice to him because he's a nice guy. All right, buddy. God bless you, Christian Answers. Take care. All right. So there you go. At least he, he, he accepted correction. <laughs> okay, Christian Answers. We'll let you stay. Let me know you're there. Let me know you're there. See, so you got to be tough, man. He was at least he handled it. Just put a one. Don't Hey, don't block this guy. Leave him here. He's, he's good. See, you got to be tough, dude. You got to beat them, man. See, as if I haven't done sessions on intercession. Yeah, okay. Is he there? I just want him to stay. Just let us know you're here. We're not going to get rid of you. Little, little. No, I now I feel bad. 
insulting you because I feel bad. I insulted monkeys and asses and bastards. Sorry about that. I think my cat wants to come in. Let me know. See, they, they, these guys think we've never, we no, we've never heard those scripture passages. No, but hey, you know, you're not supposed to pray to the dead. Man, I've never heard those arguments. There's only one meteor between God and man. No, I never heard that, man. You know, I've never heard these passages. There's only one meteor between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Never heard that. You know what I'm saying? I'm the way, the truth, the lie. Only Jesus the way. Mary can't save you. She can't save anybody. She needs a savior. Luke 1, Man, I never heard these passages. Man, thank you. I never heard these passages, dude. No muscles, you see. I haven't been working out. Let's see. Come on, man. My baby. I haven't even been working out. I never heard these passages. Never heard them before, bro. All right. Never heard them. Now get ready, these guys. Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura. I don't care if they rebuke me. Can you get the hell out of here, dude? I don't, because these people think they know scripture. Oh, they're, 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 they see he got caught. They're dead. Oh, he, they're alive, but they're they're dead to the world. Where does it say that, man? Revelation 5.13. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, you got me there, Sam. Sam, you got me. Where? Where? Okay. I did series on it here. Let me show you. Sam, you, you got me, Sam. Sam, All right. Now, let me know if you're there, Christian Answers. I hope you didn't get blocked because I want you to stick around and learn. See, that's what it is. When someone asks me sincerely, I answer. When someone comes and debates and challenges me, then the gloves are off. Then I'm going to be mean and nasty like Protestant believer. You see here my channel? Sam, Sam, they're dead, Sam, Sam. I don't know about that, Mister. I think you're a pagan. You 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 worship a goddess, Sammy. You're pagan idolater. You worship Mary as a goddess. She's your queen. All right. So now you go here playlists. Okay, guys. You click on the playlist. You see it? Where's the beat, Sammy? It's right, son. Okay, you go here playlist. Right. The sun's knowledge of the day and hour, and people keep asking me this question. I am it. Pray I look this lean, man. Yeah, I know. See, this one I was heavy, but pray I get this lean again. Lord, I feel I'm heavy. Please save me and have mercy on me and sorry my pride. But here, where are you going to find? Communion of the saints, Thammy. Wow, Thammy. Communion of the saints. This one I was heavier, trying to slim down. There it is, Thammy. You mean you did a series on it, Thammy? Oh, yeah. That's what I did, Thammy. Drew, why would anyone ask you to pray for them and your whore mother, Drew? Drew, do people ask your whore mother to pray for them? Do people ask you a whore to pray for them? Because you're a whore. Why would anyone ask you to pray? Drew, you're a whore. You're not a Christian. You're a stupid bastard. Because the Bible says pray for one another. You dumb bastard. Now go to hell, the Valley of Hinnom, and make sure you stay there. And make sure you spend some quality time with Hamas. All right, everyone got it? Now, another dumb bastard. Why would Jesus... Why would anyone ask for your intercession and the whore that birthed you? Yeah, everyone got it now? We are right. We ready? You see how they manifest when we talk about the Blessed Mother and you want me to be nice? They don't respect the rules? They think they're honoring Jesus by disrespecting Mary. And so they get offended when I disrespect them and their mothers because their mothers are not good enough to lick Mary's sandals. And Mary's a creature, no more, no less. But the greatest of all creatures, because she gave Jesus his flesh, and they're angry that their mothers are not getting the attention. Your mothers are garbage in comparison to Mary. They are trash, low-life scum in comparison to Mary. They're not good enough to lick Mary's sandals. In comparison to Mary, your mothers are whores. Okay? Hope you understand that. Now you see why God made me tough? They keep attack. The blessed mother think they're doing Jesus a favor. And they keep disrespecting the rules, thinking they're doing me a favor. All right, everyone now focused. Can we now regroup? You know my channel's not politically correct. You know I'm not going to be liked. I'm going to be targeted and attacked. And you know I'm losing subscribers already. I'm losing a few. What do you want me to do? This, this is how God made me. What do you want me to do? He made me where I don't back down. I don't know why. But glory to God. May I use it to glorify God not sin against the Lord. Yeah, they're manifesting every time we talk about the Blessed Mother 2015. It's without fail. Every time I talk about Mary, these whores and sons of whores 
who are sons of Satan manifest. Have you noticed? Without fail. If me being a Catholic upsets you, I'm a diehard Catholic and you're a, you're a whore. Okay, now shut your mouths and get the lot here. I don't want you here. Now, everyone ready? Are we ready now so I can play the clips? Exactly, Roland. You're getting it now. Now, you see, I'm giving them a taste of their own medicine. By the way, Roland, I like you, guy, but wearing pink is kind of scary. You know, I like you, brother. Wearing pink is kind of scary. You're kind of freaking me out with that pink colored shirt. Yeah, I mean, brother, come on. I know you're sanctified and you're a believer in Christ, but don't think that you can style pink and not get people to start questioning. Okay, brother? Love you, man. A pink shirt, you know, kind of. You know. All right, now, in Jesus' name, let's regroup. You guys know the rules. Oh, even purple? That's even worse. Purple rain. Prince, purple, and he was a Joe witness. You guys know the rules, right? You know the rules, right? Lionel Analyst, does she want to look for your mother to analyze that whore? You know the rules, right? All right. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. You guys know the rules. Stop engaging one another. Stop engaging the text. Stop bringing up arguments as if you think we've never heard them. Stop thinking you're better than us. Stop thinking you know the Bible better than us. You don't. You don't know the Bible. Just shut up. Go to Antonio Dodgers, that fat slob, that spiritual slob of a whore, tool of Satan, or Jamila White. They'll welcome you. We don't care for your opinion. See, there you go, brother. Exactly. Father Ripperger said a demon told him, one Hail Mary made the demon feel like he was bashed in the face 50 times. You better believe it. So the sons of these demons manifest. Father, be glorified. Lord Jesus Almighty, Son of God, be glorified. Holy Spirit, be glorified in and through us and in this channel. And do not let me be politically correct. And at the same time, Lord, do not let me shame you. That's all that matters. I could care less about their opinion. Glory to the Father, the Spirit. All right. Everyone ready? We ready now? Thank you. The more they manifest, let's make the numbers increase. The more they unsubscribe, let's get thousands more to subscribe to make them eat crow in your face. You're trying to destroy the channel and he keeps growing. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. All right, in Jesus' name. Now let's get them to really manifest. You're sure, you ready? By the way, here is the playlist. You go to the playlist. This is when I was starting to lean out, but I was still heavy then. Pray I get leaner so I don't look like Protestant believer. Communion of the Saints, it's right there, dude. Right there, man. Now, come on, pepperoni pizza. Do I look smaller now than I did there? Come on, be honest with me. I can take it. No, I can't. I'll start crying. See how lean my face was? That's what I'm trying to get to. Please, Lord, help me to get there. Please help me not to be deceived. Please, Lord, and heal me, Lord, not to be vain. I don't want to be like Protestant believer. All right, anyway. Maybe now I'll be good enough to go work out. Okay, now, so what are we doing? All right, let's go here. Now we're going to go here. Okay, let's get the video up. You ready? Let's get the video up. You ready? A Jew, an atheist Jew, a Harvard professor sees Mary. <gasps> He's a pagan too, Sam. He's a pagan too. He's a pagan. Why well, Lepanto, I'm sure you're loving this, buddy. He's a pagan. He's a pagan too. See, that's the one. He's Jewish, Sammy. He's a pagan. He's a pagan, Sammy. He's a pagan, Sammy. Look. Okay, right here. Roy Schumann, religious Jew who became an atheist. Harvard professor who had a miraculous encounter with God, saw the Blessed Virgin, and he's now a diehard Jewish Catholic, evangelizing Jews, bringing them to the fullness of the truth because he believes the fullness of the truth is to be found in Catholic. Now, remember that... The Orthodox Catholic were one until 1054. They both have the fullness of the truth. And the only issue now for me is filioque papacy. I don't know if I'll ever be able to find the answer this lifetime. Pray God will have mercy on me, not condemn me, because I'm in the Catholic Church. And I'll even go to the Syrian Church if they let me, but the Orthodox Church won't because they're strict. So I love you guys. All right, anyway. Yep, Jordan B. Peterson's wife was miraculously healed of cancer by praying the rosary 
and she got baptized into the Catholic Church Easter Vigil. Did you guys know that? Jordan B. Peterson's wife. All right? And she attributes it to the rosary, the Blessed Mother's intercession to Jesus. And she got baptized into the Catholic Church. Yeah, there's a testimony. Jordan P. B. Peterson shared it. Go online, YouTube. Jordan B. Peterson, wife, Catholic convert, healed of cancer. That's why so many thousands are leaving Protestantism. But now here, to the chagrin of Jamila White. All right. So we're going to start at the 33-minute mark. Watch this testimony. Sammy, Sammy. Get ready to be blown away because you're going to see this is the real Mary because look what she says to him. Let me see a 33-minute mark, 12 seconds. Okay, we're going to start a little earlier. Okay, ready? All right, ready? God, who had revealed himself to me that day. And a year to the day after that first experience, and I know it was a year to the day because I remember... How now, again, she wants to start, or this guy wants to start a debate. You understand all the ancient churches call themselves Catholic, the Orthodox call themselves Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox include the title Catholic as part of their church. Do you know the Assyrian church, the official name of the Assyrian church is the Assyrian Apostolic Catholicos Church of the East? Catholic is a term that means the universal church, and it is embraced by all of these ancient churches that go back to the apostles. So when you say Catholic, all of them will amen you, but I understand what you were trying to do, saying the Roman Catholic Church to cause division. Now, I want you to go to hell and spend some time there evangelizing. All right, now, don't start division in my channel. Having said a prayer of thanksgiving before going to sleep, I, um, in thanksgiving for what had happened exactly a year earlier, and I went to sleep. And I thought I was woken by hand on my shoulder. Now I know that my body was still in Let's bed. The story. But I thought I was awake, and my memory represents it as though I were awake, and I experienced it as though I were awake. So that's the only way I can describe it. I thought I was woken by hand on my shoulder and led to a room and left alone with the most beautiful young woman I could ever imagine. Did you hear it? Guys, don't be distracted. And by the way, rejoice. Marcy Lynn, her journey took her from Arnold Murray the Shepherd's Chapel, who taught a lot of weird heretical doctrine. And now, April 27, she's going to be baptized into the Orthodox Church. Orthodox Church. Ricky, a friend of mine and his soon-to-be wife, they're getting baptized next weekend as well into the Orthodox Church. And then all the Catholics that got baptized Easter, Easter Vigil, like Truth Seeker, that Muslima who had visions of the Blessed Mother. Now, let me comment on that. Let me tell you what I see, why this is happening. Are you ready? And then when I read the testimony of that brother, whose entire family left the cult, and he's going to be baptized in Orthodox Church. Let me explain to you guys. Can I explain to you what I'm seeing from this phenomenon? May the Lord save me from error, destroy all my errors and sins, and correct me for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, now I need you to listen. Listen to me. Why is it you'll have people going to the Orthodox Church or the Catholic Church, these ancient churches. You know why? To humble all the rest of us. To humble all the rest of us. Listen to me. Don't be distracted. Focus. Let the Spirit work through me. And Holy Spirit, save me from error. Because the Holy Spirit is showing all of us He doesn't care what we think. He doesn't care for our opinion. And the same judgment we use will be used against us. What matters is the Holy Spirit knows who belongs to him. They are his possession, and he will bring them to the feet of Christ and sanctify them. So what I see happening is the Holy Spirit is allowing people to become Catholic to silence the Orthodox, allowing people to become Orthodox to silence the Catholic, 
allowing miracles to take place in the Orthodox Church to silence the Catholics, allowing miracles to take place in the Catholic Church to silence the Orthodox, saying, look, I'm present in all of you. I'm working through all of you. I'm among all of you, and I'll do miracles for all of you to show you that all of you are mine, and your opinion of one another doesn't matter to me. Oh, it's May 4th? I thought it was April 27th. My, 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 my bad, Marcy. I thought it was April 27th. Okay, let me let me prove that by showing you after this a link I'll give you to a documentary to one of the best attested and documented Marian apparitions, even acknowledged by the Catholic Church, from my understanding, that took place in Zaytun, Egypt, where the Blessed Mother appeared for a period of time. And Muslims even saw her. And a Muslim man got miraculously healed from being blind due to this apparition. Our Lady of Zaytun in Egypt that happened in the 60s, documented, seen by thousands. And I forgot to tell you my connection with the Blessed Mother. I'll get there. Too many because the demons manifest. And you from Egypt, you already know about that miracle, right? Zaytun. Zaytun. She appeared over a period of time. And there were Muslims who were seeing the apparition. She was appearing as light. And then one of the pictures captured, they took pictures, actual photos captured. They saw her descend to the cross and bow down before the cross of her son. And a Muslim man in the audience miraculously received the sight and was screaming, I can see, I can see. And from what I know, the Catholic Church recognizes this Marian apparition. From what I know, guys now confirm it. So you see what the Lord did again? Ah, I'm going to do a miracle for the Coptic Church. And I'm going to do a miracle for the Eastern Orthodox Church. And I'm going to do a miracle for the Catholic Church. So I can shut all your mouths and show you these churches are mine. I'm going to show it to you. Just give me a second. Yeah, he said that, right? I can see, I can hear. Yeah, shut it. I want to show you the video and just let me finish because there's too much to talk about. You see, the demons manifest when we honor the blessed, beautiful mother of our Lord. Now, look what he said. He saw a young, beautiful lady. Look what he's going to say. Okay, listen. Remember, YouTube, copyright law allows for fair use for educational purposes. Up to know the name of my Lord and Master and God who had revealed himself to me that day. And a year to the day after that first experience, and I know it was a year to the day because I remember having said a prayer of Thanksgiving before going to sleep uh, um, in Thanksgiving for what had happened exactly a year earlier. And I went to sleep and I thought I was woken by a hand on my shoulder. Now I know that my body was still in bed but I thought I was awake and my memory represents it as though I were awake and I experienced it as though I were awake. So that's the only way I can describe it. I thought I was woken by a hand on my shoulder and led to a room and left alone with the most beautiful young woman I could ever imagine. Did you hear it? The most beautiful young woman I could imagine. Did you hear that? Now, this is a Jew who was a Harvard professor who was an atheist when he had this experience. And he's been consistent all these years in his experience. And he's trying to bring the Jews to the fullness of Judaism, which he says is a Catholic faith. Did you hear it? Roy Schumann. Did you hear it? Okay, listen. And I knew without being told that it was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when I found myself in her presence... All I wanted to do was fall on my knees and honor her somehow oh. appropriately. Um, oh, my goodness. Fall on your knees to honor and so <gasps> Idolatry, worship, paganism. You pagan. You thinking pagan. What happened to you, Jew boy? Jew boy. You went from worshiping the one God of Israel, Hashem. Now you commit idolatry. What happened to you, Jew boy? Where's Tovia singer? Tovia, come save the Jew. Um, just to be in her presence, to be in the presence of the purity and the intensity of the love that flowed from her 
was to be lefted up into a state of ecstasy greater than I ever imagined. Could you hear what he said? Her presence, he was so filled with love and joy from her presence. It was like ecstasy. He was just floating. Listen. Exist. Now I think actually that's very related to the bliss of heaven. But anyway, um, and uh, I just I just wanted to fall on my knees and honor her somehow. The first thing she said to me was she offered to answer any questions I might have for her. Um, the first thought I had when I found myself in her presence and wanted to honor her appropriately was, oh my gosh, I wish I at least knew the Hail Mary. Um, <laughs> But I didn't. So when she said she would offer any, she offered to answer any questions I might have for her, I kind of wanted to ask her to teach me the Hail Mary, but I was too proud to admit that I didn't know it. So as a kind of indirect way of getting her to teach me the Hail Mary, I thought, I asked her what her favorite prayer to her was. You slip. Um, her initial answer was a little bit coy. It was, I love all prayers to me. Oh. <gasps> But I was a little bit what pushy. Happened to you? Maybe that's because I'm from New York. Maybe not. Wait, wait, wait. wait. But um, I don't I believe my ears. Wait, wait, guys. I don't believe my ears. Did this Jew just say that Mary said, I love all prayers to me? Damn. Sam, what happened to you, Sam? The black pope got a hold of you. Son, he got a hold. Hey, Ed, bring Ted. Tell Fred, hey, this guy's shiny head. We got to lay hands on him, son. Fred, bring Ted. Where's Ed? And hey, Ned, bring the belt. This boy's stark lunatic, stark crazy man. He's now talking about praying to Mary. I'm not saying it's uh, idolatry, son. Damn you. Damn you, Sammy. You used to be on the right path, Sammy. Sammy, what happened here, Sammy? Oh, my goodness. The Black Pope, the Jesuits got a hold of you, Sammy. Oh, my good Lord. Save him. Save him, Lord. Save him. And the neighbor's gonna think he's crazy about her. Save him, save him, please. What happened? Oh, damn, Sammy, damn. You lost, son. You lost it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. You lost it, man. I said, You must love some prayers more than others. And she relented and she recited a prayer. But it was in Portuguese, and I didn't know any Portuguese. Portuguese. So all I could do was make the effort to remember. Portuguese, not Chaldean. It for Kutha, Kama, Kama. Portuguese, huh? Remember the first few syllables phonetically, and the next morning when I woke up, I immediately wrote them down phonetically. And then later, when I met a Portuguese Catholic woman, I asked her to recite the Marian prayers in Portuguese so I could identify it. And to the best of my ability, I identified. Freddie, maybe if you stop being a whore, like the whore gave you birth. Freddie, maybe if you stop being a whore, like the whore gave you birth, then you'll understand. Get the lot of here, you bastard. I don't want you here. You filthy scum low life. Pit on you, even though my spit's better than you. Get the lot of here. I did as O oh Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us, our recourse to thee. Do you hear what prayer she liked? I will say a couple, I'll go on to a couple more Watch questions here. and answers more than others. And she relented and she recited a prayer, but it was in Portuguese, and I didn't know any Portuguese. So all I could do was make the effort to remember the first few syllables phonetically. And the next morning when I woke up, I immediately wrote them down phonetically. And then later when I met a Portuguese Catholic woman, I asked her to recite the Marian prayers in Portuguese so I could identify it. And to the best of my ability, I identified it as, O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us, have recourse to thee. <gasps> I will say a couple, I'll go on to a couple more questions and answers, but before I do, let me say, that uh, first of all, the most overwhelming aspect of the experience was was the experience of her love. And as uh, beautiful as she was to look at, and she was perfectly beautiful, even more profoundly affecting than her visual beauty was the beauty of her voice, the sound of her voice. Uh, the only way I can describe it Listen. is that her voice was made up of that which makes music, music that quality which makes music, music. You hear it? Her voice sounded like music. Her voice sounded like a melody. Sounded like music. Was the essence of her voice. And when she spoke, 
this incredibly beautiful voice just flowed through me, carrying with it her love and lifting me up into the state of ecstasy. Um, I'll mention a couple of more things after those sure. questions I asked, that I asked her. Most of the questions I asked her came from being overwhelmed by who she was um, and by wanting to kind of somehow respond properly to that. So at one point I asked her, and it was more of an exclamation than a question, but I kind of stammered out, how can it be? How is it possible? How can it be that you're so glorious, that you're so magnificent? That you're Did you hear it? He was in awe of her beauty, how she was beatified. He was in awe. Watch the response. Look at what Mary's going to say to him. Watch the response. You're so exalted. How can it be? And her response was to look down at me almost with pity, pity. and shake her head gently and say, oh, no, you don't understand. I'm nothing. I'm a creature. I'm a created thing. He's everything. Does that sound like Mary or not? Does that sound like Mary or not? Did you see that, you Protestant slanderers who accuse Catholics and Orthodox of idolatry and then say that these are demonic visions? Did you hear that? Oh, no, I'm only a creature. I'm nothing. He's everything. That's the real Mary. She brings you to Christ. Share it one more time. You filthy slanderers. You slander, I'm going to insult your mothers. What are you going to do about it? Come find me. Okay, right here. Let's go back again. Let's hear it again. Nation than a question, but I kind of stammered out, how can it be? How is it possible? How can it be that you're so glorious, that you're so magnificent, that you're so exalted? How can it be? And her response was to look down at me almost with pity and shake her head gently and say, oh, no, you don't understand. I'm nothing. I'm a creature. I'm a created thing. He's everything. Wow. And then again, out of the desire to honor her somehow, I asked. hear that? You heard that, right? Do you hear that? I am nothing. I'm a creature, created thing. He's everything, all right? Where is the idolatry? Where is the paganism? Where is the blasphemy? Where? Where? But anyway, watch here now. Watch here. I asked her what title she liked best for herself. What title she liked best? And her response was, I am the beloved daughter of the father, mother of the son, and spouse of the spirit. Okay. Did you hear what? Now, he's an atheist when he sees this. Harvard professor, Jew, atheist. And Mary is telling him stuff that he ends up learning later because he doesn't understand what's what I mean. Notice, she's the daughter of God the Father. She is. Mother of God the Son because she gave him flesh. Spouse Holy Spirit because who caused her to conceive, conceive and get pregnant and give the physical body, human nature, to Christ without sex? The Holy Spirit. I believe that's absolutely of God. Absolutely of God, Fatima. Over what? 30,000 eyewitnesses. Some were even Marxist. And newspaper reports of the miracle, a bona fide miracle seen by over 30,000. Yeah, of course that is, man. And I'm going to give you the link again so you can watch it. We're going to play another 30 seconds of this and then. Um, by now, of course, I had figured out that if this is the Blessed Virgin Mary, it had been Christ in that earlier experience. And it's all about Christianity, and I had better get up to speed pretty quick. So all my life, I had heard the expression, the Holy Spirit, but I had no idea what it meant. He didn't know what the Holy Spirit meant. Now, again, Jewish man encounters, oh, but that's a satanic deception, son. Now, he's asking the Blessed Mother who the Holy Spirit is. Now, watch your reaction. Watch your reaction. I have no reason to doubt this man's testimony because I'm not a Protestant. And so um, I asked her, and I apologize for the way I phrased it, but I didn't know any better. I said to her, what's this business about the Holy Spirit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
And her response was just to look upwards with an expression melting with love. Did you hear it? She looked upwards, melting with passionate love for the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit who caused her to conceive the body of Christ without sex. And her reaction was to be melting with love with the Holy Spirit, who's her God. And say he's his gaze. He's his gaze. Did you so hear Who's Holy Spirit? He's his gaze. Okay, I want to show you now how biblical this is. I'm going to blow you away. Okay, listen. Because, you know, I got the skeptic, fam. And say he's his gaze. So I asked her about his gaze. Now, you want me to show you the Bible confirmation of this? Do you want me to blow you away to prove to you what he heard is biblical? You sola scripturas and tota scripturas. He's his gaze, meaning the Holy Spirit is the means by which the Father and the Son gaze upon us, look upon us. You want me to show you that from scripture? You ready? You ready? Show you how biblical it is. Uh, hopefully I can get to Daniel Pikachu. We'll see. Let me show you how. You ready? Get ready. No, Sam, that's not Bible, Sammy. Sammy, that's not scripture, man. What happened, Sammy? You fell off, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy, you used to be a Christian, man. What happened to you, son? That's why I'm on subscribing, Sammy. I'm on subscribing. That's why you're going to lose support. You're going to be living in your car, panhandling, Sammy. You're going to be broke, and it's no joke. And then I read going to throw you in jail for back taxes because you ain't going to have money to pay them back. <laughs> oh, you thug, Sammy. Yeah, I know I thug, Sammy. Watch here. Here you go. Revelation 5, 6. Ready? Sammy. 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 Sam. 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 You see it? Okay. Enlarge a little more. Sammy, you suck, Sammy. Then I saw in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders, a lamb, Jesus appearing as a young male lamb, slain but alive, being raised from the dead as of slain, having seven horns, seven eyes. What do you use your eyes to do, guys? What do you use your eyes for? What do you use eyes for? To gaze, right? Can you gaze on someone without eyes? Don't worry, crystals. You can sacrifice beauty sleep. Your husband thinks you're beautiful as it is. You don't need to sleep. Sleep is overrated. But now who are the seven eyes? Seven eyes on the Lamb, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the world. And I've done sessions explaining what seven means. Seven is the number of perfection, completion. The Lord Jesus has perfect sight. He sees everything perfectly. That's why seven eyes. Because in union with the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, in union with the Holy Spirit, he oversees all creation. You get it? You get it? Amen. Come to the fullness of the truth. So there is your biblical basis. Now, let me give you another testimony that's documented and confirmed by John Burke. John Burke is one of the leading experts on near-death experiences. This is documented. It is not a lie. It's confirmed. This young Jewish girl had an out-of-body experience. I've already discussed the biblical basis for experience. I want to play that too. This is something even Protestants will accept. You know, This part with Mary, they're going to manifest as demons. So let's go here. Sammy. Let's play this. So I wanted to play that because of what the young lady sent me. And I'm going to tell you my connection with the Blessed Mother, and then we begin. See how they manifest every time we talk about the Mother? You tell me that's a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? All right, watch here. All right, watch here. Get ready. I've shared this testimony. You'll even do, if you put in Jewish woman in my search engine, this will pop up. And I've given the verses showing that what she saw is confirmed 
by scripture. Okay. I grew up in Council Bluffs, Iowa, in a Jewish family. My dad had a mantra. Jesus Christ is the biggest hoax ever perpetrated on mankind. Christians are idiots for having hope. Your life has less significance than the smallest speck of dust in this infinite universe. We were in an accident where another horse ran into my horse. She reared up, flipped over backwards with me on her back and fell across my body. As she hit my chest, I immediately left my body. I was up 30, 40 feet in the air. I just left. I knew I was dead. And as I was up there, I noticed that even though it was a cloudy day, this light was shining over my shoulders. Lightless. There was a light over my shoulders and it was illuminating everything in front of me. And I realized there was a person standing right there and he moved forward and he was standing, we were up in the air, but we were standing. And uh, he is standing right next to me and I looked at him and he looked at me and it's like, oh Jesus, oh, hey. It's like, how you doing? Listen to this. I sure. knew that I had known him my entire life. It was not a surprise. I was not shocked. I was not thinking, what is a nice Jewish girl like me seeing Jesus? Why am I seeing Jesus? No, I knew this man. I knew him. Here. And he sees him as a man. Pay attention. She's a Jewish girl, 16. Her spirit leaves her body, so she's dead. And recognizes this man has always been there with me and she's going to now see the trinity watch watch and i've given the biblical basis for this story in previous sessions listen and um he he was smiling at me we were talking but i mean it's not like my mouth was moving but i know we were talking and he very quickly showed me my life i didn't have a whole lot to see because really and truly i was a good kid did you hear that one common feature of near-death experiences, one common feature, they tell you that they don't talk with their mouths. Their mouths don't move. They communicate mind to mind. Mind to mind. Pray for me too, Callie. God save me from my lust and food addiction. We all need healing. You hear that? Now watch. So the Lord gave her a life review. Watch here. And by the way, ironically, she's a hospice nurse. And he... he uh... I saw him from the time I was formed in my mother's womb. He had been with me. He had always been with me all my life. Hey, Jeremiah, and um, four, you know, just when I used to talk to God at night when I was a little kid, he'd been there. That He'd been there sitting by my bed. I saw that. He's been there. After this life review, and I was no longer really looking at the ground. He'd been there. He was there when I was praying on my bed when I was a child. It was him. I saw it when he showed me my life review. And I prayed. I saw him sitting next to me. And again, she's referring to Jeremiah 1, 4 to 11. And John 1, 1 to 5. That the word formed us in the womb and has been with us. He took my hand and we flew. We surfed. I didn't go through a tunnel. A lot of people, I've heard people say they go went through a tunnel. <laughs> no tunnel. It was like we had this wave of light under our feet. And I know my feet were bare because I could feel the wave of light under my feet. And it was pushing us forward. And we were holding hands and flying like Superman and Lois Lane. Mm -hmm. So faster and faster and faster, I saw a light. And it was getting closer and closer. And it was, it's a living light. And it's the brightest thing you can imagine, but I could look at it. Living light. Jesus brought me to living light. The brightest thing you can imagine, but you can look at it. No, brother, this is an out-of-body experience. She died. Her soul left her body. Who is that living light? Listen now. And you would think it would burn you, but it doesn't. It's perfect. It's blemishless. What and it blemishless. takes up, that light took up my entire field of vision. It was infinite in its scope, okay. but it was alive. And that light was love. Light was love. And Jesus took me directly into the light. Jesus took me. Jesus took me. One more time. Jesus took me directly into the light. Jesus took me there. Who did he take her to? Listen. And the next thing I knew, I find, found myself sitting on God's lap. And I have a granddaughter, a two-year-old granddaughter. 
and you know if she needs comforting or she wants to be held she she'll sit on my lap and bury her her face in my chest and I'll put my arms around her and she'll, she'll have her arms around me that's what I was doing I was like a little kid I was sitting on God's lap and I buried my face against his chest and I put my arms around him and he had his arms around me and I never ever wanted to leave I didn't want to leave I didn't. watch what you're gonna say she's gonna talk about the Trinity without knowing it's the Trinity because she goes I can't describe it I know what I saw and it was real now listen and I'm gonna give you the biblical basis again because I know you guys are hungry for the word just wanted to sit there forever and be held by God and it's I can't explain how God can be a light and God can be how can God be light that was the father be a man and how can God be a man that was the son let's go back again and I'm giving you a link so you can go save it and listen to it God can be a light and God can be a man and God can be love I I can't explain it I can't but that's what I experienced and there it is. And this has been confirmed by John Burke. John Burke is one of the leading near-death experience experts. It's now a medical field. They even have a branch for it and journals to submit these testimonies. John Burke, who was interviewed by Full Armor Apologetics. He's also featured in movie. The Buying Emotion oh, Color Wheel. Up, you little monkey, you bastard. Don't you ever cut me out. He was interviewed by Lee Strobel for Case for Heaven. He's considered one of the leading experts. Full Armor Apologetics on his YouTube channel interviewed him about less than a year ago. There it is. So here's the link. Now, you want me to give you the biblical basis for what she saw? This is a documented near-death experience. Do you want me to, again, you guys don't mind if I take time? You sure? Because I may have to then delay. Daniel, I'll kick at you, pig at you. Let's see. Okay, let me again, let me again share the biblical basis. What, what did she say? She goes, Jesus is man and God. Man and God. And when he gave me a life review, he showed me he was with me from my mother's womb. From my mother's womb, she said. And when I was praying as a child, he was sitting next to me. I saw God the Father as pure light, perfect light, and pure love. And Jesus brought me to him. All right. You guys want me to show you the scriptures, right? All right. Here you go. I'm here to be used of the Spirit to bless you if you are enjoying this. All right. Let's see. God is light. Okay, let's see. God is light. All right, here you go. And he's love, right? And Jesus. All right, let's see. How about Jesus? Let me line up the verses for you. La, 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 la. Let me now give you the biblical basis for her. Out of body experience. You ready? Okay, Sonia, here you go. La, 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 la. God is light, right? Bless Yahweh, oh my soul. Psalm 104, verses 1 and 2. Oh Yahweh, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, wrapping yourself with light as with a cloak. You're dressed in light, stretching out the heavens like a tent curtain. Okay? Keep focusing, brethren. Lord, increase the numbers for your praise. 1 John 1, 5 to 7. And this is the message we've heard from him and declared to you that God is light. Now, which person of God is John referring to here? You'll see. And in him, there is no darkness at all. See, she goes, unblemished, perfect light. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, which represents evil, we lie and do not know the truth, but... If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, then the result is we who are in the light will have fellowship with each other like we're doing now. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So here it's God the Father. Are you seeing the biblical basis for these miracles? And I'm going to give you the documentary on Zaytun. All right, hold on. Let me say this. I'm live right now on my stream. Do you want me to bring you up if you have questions? Come watch. I'm live. All right. Okay, Christian answers. Now, you're good, brother. You're okay. You're not offending me and cussing you out. All right. Now, watch here. 
She said, God is love. The one who does not love, sure John 4, 8, does not know God because God is love. Isn't that what she said? A Jewish girl, 16 years old, whose dad told her Jesus is a myth, Christianity is a lie, there is no God. And she's seeing the Bible being confirmed in her out-of-body experience. How about 1 John 4, 16? And then what did Jesus say to her? She was there praying on her, Ben. She's next to her, and she goes, He's I knew him. He was there with me from my mother's womb. She said that, right? And we have come to know and have believed the love which God has in us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. All right, so far, so good. What about the part where, yeah, I knew him. He was always there. He was been with me since my mother's womb. And when I would pray, he'd sit next to me. And he's a man and he's God. And he's not the father. Remember? He's not the father, modalists. Modalists, she just destroyed your modalism. Muslim, she just destroyed Muhammad and your fake God. Unitarian, she just destroyed your Unitarianism because she saw Jesus as God and man. And she saw God the Father who wasn't Jesus. Right? You got it? So hold on, let's see. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 11. Now pay attention, Christian answers. Who came to Jeremiah? The word of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh came to me saying. Notice it's the word of God. He's speaking. Pay attention. Word of Yahweh. He's speaking. So he appears to Jeremiah. Look what he says. Before I formed you in the, in, in the innermost parts, I knew you. Before I created you in the womb, I already knew you. And before you came out from the womb, I set you apart. I have given you as a prophet to the nations. Wait, she goes, Jesus was with me since the time I was in my mother's womb. And here's the word of the Lord who becomes flesh. And I'm going to show you in John 1. And he's telling Jeremiah, even before I made you in the womb, I already had chosen you to be my spokesperson. And now I'm appearing to you. So then what does he call this word who's speaking? Then I said, alas, Lord Yahweh. So he knows he's God. What did she say? Jesus is man and he's God, but he's not the father. Alas, Lord Yahweh, behold, I do not know how to speak because I'm a youth. Oh, so Jeremiah was young. Just like she was young, she was 16 and still innocent in the eyes of the Lord. Hmm. Hold on, watch. Watch. See, I got to be tough and mock and ridicule dogs and bastards who want to come and attack and don't want to be humble and learn. Alas, Lord Yahweh, behold, I do not know how to speak because I'm a youth. But Yahweh said to me, do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. Now watch. The word of Yahweh, who is Yahweh, who created him, because it's the word of Yahweh. Look, he appears in visible form. He appears as a man. How do I know? Watch here. Do not say I'm a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go and all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them for I'm with you to deliver you, declares Yahweh. Then Yahweh sent forth his hand. Oh, so Yahweh appeared with a visible shape, with a visible hand. And Jeremiah felt Yahweh's hand visibly touch him, physically touch him. And touch my mouth. And Yahweh said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to uproot and tear down, to cause the perishable down, to build and plant. Now again, who is this Yahweh that's appearing in a human form, even though he didn't become man, but he can assume a human form? And you can actually feel his hand touch you? Here, if you missed it, the word of Yahweh came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Now, let's see who that word of Yahweh is. Let's see who that word of Yahweh is. Please listen. Good, brother. That's why, brother, I didn't block you because now I saw you're sincere. So God bless you. Be humble and the Lord will exalt you. Buddy, I'm a diehard Catholic. I'm hoping they'll make me the next pope. You don't like it? Get the hell out of here. All right. Now watch. Who is this word that appeared to Jeremiah? 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was in the beginning with god all things came into being through him the word is the creator and life giver he created jeremiah he created heidi that jewish girl he created me he created you and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being in him was life he's the source of our life and the life was the light of man and he's the one who gives us spiritual illumination oh and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overtake it there was the true light which coming into the world enlightens everyone he was in the world and the world was made through him he came into the world became flesh and the world did not know him who is this word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth you see how biblical her dream is it wasn't a dream i'm sorry it was an out-of-body experience she died so left it wasn't even a dream or vision you see it that jesus became flesh he is the word who formed us in the womb who's been with us who oversees us and what did jesus do it says jesus took me when he flew like superman and lois lane and he took me to the father right so he's not the father he's a man but he's also god and god is the father notice she didn't say god the father is a man he's light but he's a living light and he can hold you and embrace you because he can assume a form by which you feel his touch and love and who brought her to the father well here you go this is bible john 14 verse 6 and jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life i'm the source of life i am reality there's no reality apart from me you want to know reality you got to get to know me and i'm the one who does what bring you to the father no one comes to the father but through me she had the bible being fulfilled before her eyes now let me ask you a question how this relates to the blessed mother now let me open your minds and i'm going to tie in my connection with the blessed mother okay blessed mother how did Jesus become flesh by the Holy Spirit, taking who? The Virgin Mary, causing her to conceive without sex, so that the eternal word truly entered and became part of Mary's body, taking flesh from her flesh, bones from her bones, blood from her blood, DNA from her DNA, because there was no male, no male. Mary gave Jesus his entire human nature. He received his human nature, physical body, from her and her alone. There was no man. He got no chromosomes from a man. Oh, there was an orb? Oh, an orb showed up? Okay. Well, Jerby, they say they saw an orb. I don't know. Maybe that's another confirmation from the Holy Spirit. The orb showed up after a while, huh? Well, that's probably confirmation of the Holy Spirit. Orb is light. God is light. Angels can pure as light. Sadly, Satan can as, as well. Okay. Do you understand what I just said? Did it sink in? Do you understand? Do you understand that virgin Jewish woman in her teens, in her teens, carried, carried, the fullness of God Almighty, the Son, the eternal word, the creator and life giver of all things, dwelt in her in all his fullness, being conceived in her, taking flesh, blood, DNA from her, and being nourished from her body. And you don't see how great and significant she is? Well, we don't know how he did it, Captain Ron. The Lord doesn't tell us how he did it. We don't know how he did it. He did it. Just like he didn't need chromosomes to create Adam or 23 chromosomes to form Eve, right? 46, I mean. He didn't need it. I don't know. He did it, and we trust God. You understand now?
who this woman is, that you guys keep thinking you're doing God a favor by denigrating her. You know, you're not doing God a favor. You understand the significance of this woman? What woman will be given the privilege of bearing, conceiving the physical body, human nature of the almighty God containing in her womb the almighty God in his fullness? Now look at this stupid whore, this stupid heart. So a woman who carries God in his fullness gives him the flesh that he used to save a whore like you. What would make? Why would that make her significant? You again? I shouldn't call you a whore. Whore are better than you and your mother. You piece of garbage. May God crush your mouth and humiliate you to repent. <laughs> On you, stupid bastard. See the piece of garbage? Why would that make her significant? Well, that at least shows that your mother is not worthy to lick her sandals, because your mother is known till this day for being a Shia prostitute and whore in Iran. That's how she fired you, stupid bastard. And you want me to be nice? See that the comment? After saying that she had God physically indwelling her in all his fullness becoming physical, fleshly from her, well, what does that make her significant? Well, what makes your mother significant? Oh, because she's a Shia prostitute. Guys, pray for me to be bold, fearless, and never back down. Be more bold, more lion-hearted, even unto death, and glorify Christ. Stupid bastard. Now, let me tie it in with my experience with the Blessed Mother. Okay? How... Again, let me share you the testimony. Guys, help me to help you stay focused. You're not going to help me by chime. Just engage me and let me deal with the trolls. Yep, everyone's seeing the orbs, huh? Stay seated. The orbs isn't done yet. Okay, thank you, sister. We're live. Maybe I'll unblock you in the future. I know you're listening. Okay, watch here. Why did I decide to share these clips with you? Because this is what I got today. A devout Catholic charismatic woman had a dream. And she shared it with me. Here it is again. So you don't think I'm lying. Okay. So you don't think I'm lying. I don't want you to see her name. Sent to me. So I'm going to tell my experience now. All right. Journey of faith. Yes, we see you, but not for long. Okay. Watch again what she says to me. Okay. Sam, brother, forgive me as this may seem a little crazy. I am not sure if you are aware of the spiritual charisms of the Holy Spirit. No, me and Protestant, we don't know anything. We're stupid. Okay, now watch. Okay, but many Christians are now being equipped with visions, prophecies, dreams, etc. He wants to pour it out at people. I saw in a dream... That you, meaning me, she's talking to me, will be reaching out to Arabs as well. I see you preaching in love. You understand what that means, Protestant? You and me are not very loving. In love. Can you pray that God will then give me... Here, guys, can you pray for me? Here's what I need you to do. Ask the Lord to keep me pure and undefiled till I die and never fall into scandal, but finish the race and glorify the Lord. And ask him for this favor. Can you ask the Lord to speed up my metabolism? Can you ask the Lord to do a miracle with my metabolism so my metabolism gets so stoked that I can eat deep dish pizza and gallons of ice cream and stay skinny and I don't have to work out anymore? Could you guys do me that favor, please? Please. That's all I want, man. Two things you won't do in heaven. You won't eat meat and there'll be no intimacy. So you better get married, get married and enjoy intimacy and have as much meat because you ain't having it there. You ain't having it there. So I love food. And by the grace of God, I pray I get married. Because I ain't going to have it there. So can you ask, Lord, give him a metabolism that's so stoked it burns calories that I lose weight. Because I look at food and I feel fat again. <laughs> please, please. All right, anyway. Okay, anyway, listen to this. I see you preaching in love. 
Holy Spirit wants to lead you. May he lead me and own me and fill me through this. These, This will win souls. Look what she says. I want you to see it. Okay, so I don't think I'm lying. Okay. You are a Marian, meaning Mother Mary always took a special interest in you. Before you even knew that, there's a powerful presence of Our Lady. Okay. Powerful presence of Our Lady with you. Okay. She's working powerfully through you to bring others to Jesus. Bro brother, please look into it. All right. Now, let me share, you, share with you how my journey brought me here. How my journey brought me here. And I can confirm what she's saying. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for Raymond Malco. I need you to listen to my story. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for Raymond Malco. Raymond Malco, an Assyrian from Lebanon, his grandmother, we called her Khalti Shmuni, Anti Shmuni, a devout Assyrian Lebanese Catholic. I don't know what right. I don't know what they are in Lebanon. I don't know if they're Maronites or Melka. I don't know. Devout Assyrian Lebanese Catholic. When this young man met me, I was six and a half years old. Six and a half years old. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to me. I've shared the testimony. It's not the first time. And you heard his voice on the phone. I called him. Hopefully I can get him on the stream to share the testimony. When he preached the gospel to me, his grandmother would teach us prayers. She taught me the Ave Maria when I was six and a half years old. Six and a half years old. At that age, I didn't know anything. She was teaching me prayer. She taught me, Qaddisha Allah, Qaddisha Khilthana, Qaddisha Lamayutha. She, she taught me that prayer in Assyrian. In fact, Thomas is younger than me. Thomas, I grew up with him. Thomas remembers Raymond Malko. I don't know if you remember his grandmother, the tiny woman, Shmuni. I don't know if you remember that. All right. She taught me the Ave Maria when I was six and a half. In other words, even back then, the seeds were planted. The seeds were planted of my love for the Blessed Mother, the Mother of our Lord. Though I was being taught, I was being taught Baptist theology from a young age. Raymond's uncle, his Pater maternal uncle, his mother's brother, became a Baptist preacher. So he taught Raymond Baptist theology, whereas his grandmother was still a devout Catholic. So I was being raised Baptist, taught Protestant Baptist theology, but her prayers for me and teaching me how to pray planted the seed that didn't leave me even when I left Christianity and came back because I always had a love and a fascination with the Blessed Mother. There are people who tell you, even when I was Protestant, I would speak honorably of the Blessed Mother and call her the Mother of our Lord, the Mother of my Lord. Because the connection was there since I was young. Because of that woman. And the form of the Ave Maria she taught me, okay, was this. this how, now again, my, my voice is a little tired. This is how she taught it to me. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave. And I don't know how to do the rest of it, but that's what I remember. Piz, you know you're a stupid, dumb bastard thinking we've never read Luke 11, 27, 28. You know, Piz, this is why I say your mother must be a whore because you just misquoted Luke 11, 27, 28. You pit it Luke 11, 27, 28 against Luke 1. <clears throat> Luke 1, if you read from Luke 1, 26 to 56. Because you're a stupid bastard. You don't know the Bible. You are a whore that belongs to Satan and a Bible butcher. Because we've never read Luke 11, 27, 28. You piece of garbage. May the Lord crush your mouth and rebuke you to learn to fear the Lord. You filthy lowlife. You're like your father, the devil. 
quoting verses out of context. Stupid bastard. I even have a session on Luke 11. You stupid, dumb bastard. Here. Let me now rebuke you demons who think you know scripture. We don't know Luke 11. Oh, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that gave you suckle. Rather, blessed is he who hears the word of God and keeps it. We've never heard that passage. Che! We've never heard that. You filthy, lowlife son of the devil. Scum. You think we don't know these passages? Here. Let me humiliate you to show you are of your father, the devil. May God save people from you until you repent before it's too late. We've never heard Luke 11, guys. Here, Luke 11, 27, 28, my search engine. Gee, let's look at it. I've never done a session on that. No, that's a new one to me. Oh, a supporter unsubscribes. Luke 11, 27, 28, denigrates Mary. Oh, really? I've never done a session on that. Never heard that passage before in my life. Yeah, but you're not my neighbor. You're a son of the devil, and the Bible says, rebuke them, expose them, have nothing to do with them, silence them. Okay, Noit, you're a filthy, scum, lowlife. So shut your mouth and get the hell out of here. Read your Bible in context, you demons. Did you notice they manifested again? They manifested again. We've never read Luke 11, 27, 28, guys. Never. I've never read Luke 11, 27, 28. Gee, is that why I have a session on it? Is that why I have a session on Luke 11, 27, 28? Man, I look the same here, don't I? Honestly, guys, is not my head the same shape? So I keep thinking I'm getting heavier. Gee. Like clockwork, Elias. You notice it, guys. When I honor the Blessed Mother, these horrors start manifesting. God, we ask, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, show me that I am not angering you, disgracing you, but that I am delighting your heart. Show me that, Lord. Confirm it to me. Glory to the Father, Son, Spirit. Right? So we got it? We don't know. We've never read Luke 11, 27, 28. Never, no, no, that's a new one. Lepanto, you know, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Hey, Lepanto, Luke's in your Bible? I didn't know that Luke was in the Bible. Damn. Damn. All right. Now that I shared this story, now can we unleash our anger on Allah and his messenger? Do you have more time or are you guys tired? You want me now unleash my anger on Muhammad and his fake God and punish that Pikachu, Daniel? We ready now for the second part? Because you saw the demons manifested in this one. Damn. Come on, man. Don't my face look lean? Come on. Lean, mean fighting machine. We were saying it all. All right, folks. Woo. It's like the battles never end. The disrespect never ends. How many times do I have to begin the session? It's what I feel, right? Every time I begin the session, I remind people the rules. Remind them we don't want your opinion. We could care less for your opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter. We don't give a damn what you think you know about the Bible. You don't like the channel, go somewhere else. But the demons, these spiritual whores, can't help it because they're pricked of Satan, filled with Satan. And they manifest. That's why I rebuke them. That's why you're not my neighbor. You're not my brother. There's no way you can be a Christian and manifest and disrespect the way you do until you repent. Now, you can repent like Christian answers who, who was too big for his britches and he got humble. Glory to the Father, so All right, now we ready for the second part? We were saying in the law on a moonlight, one love can on a kind of money. By the way, another testimony. Roland Birch, Birchett is another testimony. Roland Burchett was taught to hate Catholicism. He was taught that Catholicism is pagan from the pit of hell. Roland, are you one of my mods, brother? I thought I made you a mod. You should be a mod. You're a regular dude, but you know, I haven't seen you in a while. Hold on. Roland's not a mod? Wait, Protestant believer is a mod and you're not a mod? You see how unfair the world is? Let me see where is he is. Hold on. Is he a mod? 
I'm gonna end up making everyone mad, and there'll be no more visitors. He's not a mod. Let me see. Where is he? Roland, where are you, mister? Rolling, rolling, rolling. He's got a testimony he's gonna share with you. Roland, you were a diehard, a diehard anti-Catholic, were you not? You could not stand the Catholic Church. Now, I'm trying to see if you're a mod because in your comment, can you tell us what happened? Where is this guy's name, dude? He was on. Roland, what happened to you? Oh, here, here you go. He's not. Yeah, poor guy. How can I miss you with that purple shirt? Purple rain. Here you go, brother. Now you're a mod. Purple rain. Brother, you were a diehard anti-Catholic, correct? Tell us in the comment section what happened to you. Purple rain, purple rain. Tell us, brother, what happened. Now you're a mod. You can comment faster. Watch your purple, because he's a regular. He's been with me for years. Yes, you are, dude. You're a mod right now. You see, you got a wrench. I just made you a mod. You can comment, sir. Go ahead. Tell us your story, mister. What happened to you, sir? Comment. You can comment, sir, before the rapture. What happened? Didn't you hate the Catholic Church? Tell us in in less than one million words, in less than five hours. You got four hours and 45 minutes. What happened to you? How did you end up now loving the Catholic Church? And what church do you go to now? Praise Allah. Allah is under my foot and Muhammad is a dog in hell. You can't get more disgusting, Muhammad, who mounted little girls, beat women, and molested women like your mother. May God erase Muhammad's name. Go ahead, Roland. Can you comment faster, brother? You know, now that you know you can comment, right? Like you can write sentences. Do I have to walk you through this? Don't let me start doing the Indian accent. I made the guy mod, and it's taken him longer to respond than before he was a mod. Buddy, we want to go to sleep. People want to go to church in the morning. I'm going to have to block this dude. Now I got to block you. What was the point of making you a mod? Yes, sir. Yeah. You can comment faster, mister. What do you say to this guy? Okay. Okay, brother. So what happened? Can you now write another comment before the New Year's 2024? What? So what happened? By the, by the time this guy answers, guys, I'm going to see my grandchildren. I'm going to see my grandchildren, dude. Buddy, please. People want to go to church tomorrow. Can you, can you comment? Please, brother. Brother, please. You know you can now type every 10 seconds. You know that, right? Currently, I go to the Catholic Church. There you go. Brother, I'm going to start a GoFundMe page. We're going to buy you some different color shirts. You see it? He went from diehard anti-Catholic to now going to the Catholic Church. Brother, we're going to start a GoFundMe page because what we're going to do is we're going to buy you some nice green shirts and blue shirts and red shirts, anything but pink and purple because you look like Barney the dinosaur on crack. That's how much weight Barney lost. Or that you did the stomach surgery. I am love you. Now, by the way, on some lighter note, guess what happened? Our congressman took $95 billion of taxpayer money, our tax money, and now will send... $26.4 billion for Israel. So it went up from the $14 billion and $95 billion to Ukraine. Why? Why? Why are our politicians taking our money, sending billions to people to fight wars that we have nothing to do with? The whole world is corrupt. Our nation's corrupt. They don't care, care about us. $26.4 billion for Israel. Why? 
$95 billion for Ukraine. Why? Your tax dollars, mine, and I got to pay or I go to jail. Why? All right. So you guys saw our friend here used to hate the Catholic Church, and now he's in the Catholic Church. All right? He's in the Catholic Church. There you go. Because of the Bible? My goodness. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Anyway, we ready for Daniel Hakichichu? Are you up? You guys not tired? I wish I owed him that much. Yeah, Thomas. I may be doing live streams from C Block in a federal prison. So, guys, if you see me wearing an orange suit in, in a cell block, that's because IRS came after me. Hopefully, they got good Wi-Fi there, and I can do Bible studies there. All right. Now, let's go to da Daniel Hakikachu. Yeah, let me let me explain Ezekiel 49, because I've never done sessions on Ezekiel 49. Get that out of here, man. Return to your vomit. Okay, what am I hoping to accomplish in this series? This is part one of a new series against Daniel Pikachu. And we're going to go back and finish our series on the other talks by the grace and mercy of our God. Glory to the Father and Spirit. Okay, here's what I want to do, because I called out this slop to debate. I'm going to take the very arguments he uses against the Bible, the very arguments he uses against the Old Testament to try to show that the Bible is not God's word, and it disrespects God. And I'm going to show how his own arguments destroys the Quran, buries Muhammad, although he's already in hell, and proves that Allah of Muhammad is not the true God, but Satan. I'm going to use his own arguments. I already did a series showing him that every time he attacks the Bible, he proves Muhammad is an antichrist, a son of Satan under the feet of the Lord. So make sure you watch the series. My cat had to come in. So in this series, I'm now giving him all my material so he has no excuse to run like Aisha did from debating me. Yes, share your link, brother. But make sure next time you change the color of your shirt. So if you go to my YouTube channel right here. Well, he's got accept first. What do you mean when is it? We'll see. You go here. You put in Daniel. Now, I can't even spell the last name, dude. Haki, Haki, Ka, Chu. Okay, go here. You put in the name. And I did a series bearing the slob's lies. Right? Here it is. Haki, Ka, Chu, Pikachu. Daniel, Haki, Ka, Chu, Muslim Skeptics, part three. The Quran confirms the Bible. The Quran confirms the Bible. Part two. Part four. I think it was four or five parts. Watch the series. Watch the series. Anytime a Muslim attacks the Bible, they're only destroying the Quran, condemning Muhammad, and showing that all of the Quran is a false god. And Muhammad is condemned in hell, but for other reasons. Why? Don't let them deceive you. This is the Islamic dilemma that David Wood, myself, and others, like the late Nabil Qureshi, made popular. Islamic dilemma, we made it popular. We're not taking credit, but we made it popular. What's the Islamic dilemma? The Islamic dilemma teaches, the Islamic dilemma teaches, I hope you're not saying I need cardio, Alex, because I'm going to come and find you and stick my foot up your arse. That's all I do is cardio, you fat little cow. Anyway, the Islamic dilemma teaches that the Quran and the authentic Traditions attributed to Muhammad affirm that the Bible you have is the uncorrupt, preserved words of God. Are you with me there? The Quran teaches that. Don't let them lie to you. The Quran confirms the scriptures that Jesus had access to and the scriptures that Muhammad had access to and the evidence of history, archaeology, and the manuscripts show the only Bible that Jesus would have had access to and the Jews and Christians had at the time of Muhammad is the Bible you read. So if the Quran is right, your Bible is the uncorrupt Word of God. But since the Quran says your Bible is the uncorrupt Word of God, the uncorrupt Word of God, 
and yet the Quran contradicts the Bible. Now you see the dilemma. Now you see the dilemma, right? If the Quran confirms the Bible, then the Quran is a lie because it contradicts the Bible. But if the Bible is corrupt, then the Quran is a lie because the Quran says the Bible is not corrupt. You get it? By the way, I hope he was not saying to do more cardio, bro. I'll smash you, dude. I do more cardio than you can even dream. Now, if you're wondering what I was doing, I was shaving my head. So I can do, I can kill. Look at that bicep, Dan. Woo, bro, I don't even work out. I can do several things at one time, multitasking. How many people you know on a live stream sits in the kitchen with all this mess around them and then shaves their bald head, lie, and then will walk to the door and open the door and start just manifesting? And you need to zip your lip, Risa, or you're not going to be married, and you're going to die a single woman, no one marrying you. You don't tell a man what to do. I don't hit weights. I just do cardio whether you like it or not. That's why I'm leaner and better looking than you. All right, Risa? So I know man's going to marry you. Keep telling men what to do. All right, anyway. We ready now? Hold on, let me do this one. Ooh, that feels good. I don't have to wait. Haters, dude. Anyway, we ready now? Let's now go into what I'm going to do in this series. I'm going to take the very arguments of Daniel Pigachu that he levels against the depiction of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I'm going to show that the Quran describes his fake God in similar, if not identical language, that means if he has a problem with the Bible, he's going to have to bury the Quran. Okay, now let's begin. Now, how do you find the articles for the series? Okay, you go here. Risa, you're going to be living all alone in your basement. You keep telling men what to do. You ain't going to get married that way, girlfriend. You don't dominate men, right? Look at you. So you go here, right? All right. You look down here. And you look at the articles. There they are. The links. There are there they are. The links. All right. Here you go. Focus, Roland. I know now you're sensitive because you have a purple shirt and you're like, now no Catholic woman's gonna marry me because they're gonna think that I have man issues. Don't worry about it. Have faith. Whether you wear a pink shirt or a purple shirt or a purple dress, just trust the Lord. A Catholic woman will find you attractive. All right, so we're going to start with this article. All right? I'm going to start with this article. Let's do it. You ready? What am I going to demonstrate? One of the objections brought up that I saw only a clip of. I only saw a clip of it. I need you to focus. I saw a clip where he says that according to the Old Testament, God repents, changes his mind, and grieves, regrets. That was his argument. Are we ready now to turn the tables? If he wasn't <clears throat> such an ignoramus or dishonest, <clears throat> or dishonest, he would realize the Quran also describes his God as repenting and changing his mind. So this is part one, Lord willing. We'll do more in the series. But here, let's begin. Here's the article. And why did I write this article? Because I got sick of this argument. I got sick of this argument. What do I mean? No matter how many times we'd explain why the Bible says that God was grieved and God regretted that he made man, although God knows all things, they still didn't want to accept. So I said, you know what? Now let me stuff you with your vomit. Now I'm going to show you that your fake God also repents and changes his mind. Are we ready? Let's begin. Let's begin. We're going to have a lot more in the upcoming parts. I don't know what I, I Petty is saying. Both what? What's both? We ready? All right, let's begin. Does Allah of the Quran repent? Does Allah of the Quran change his mind? Does Allah of the Quran change his course of action. <clears throat> yes. Here we go. 
Let's begin. You ready? Let's look at the article. Chapter 2, verse 37 of the Quran. El Quran. Now, by the way, those who speak Arabic, those who speak Arabic who are Christians will admit to you, this is what these words mean. Let me enlarge a little more. So here begins a series. All right. Guys, focus now. Don't chime in. Focus now and don't chime in. Lisa, if it accepts you, then I will try to become the next pope. Will that make you happy? All right. Chapter 2, verse 37. Then Adam received commandments from his Lord, and his Lord repented. I want you to remember this word, tabba. Fa tabba. <clears throat> and his Lord repented towards him. And what is his Lord? His Lord is off repenting. Tawwab. One of the 99 names of Allah is Al Tawwab. Al Tawwab. Keep in mind. So, what did Allah do? Repented, turned towards Adam after having turned against him. Why? Because Allah is the one who's often repenting, changing his mind, changing his course of action. Huwa, he is Al Tawwab. The word tawb means repent, guys. Those who know Arabic will tell you. Well, that's why you can wear purple, because you're already married, your poor wife. Yeah, we're going to get there, Joel. Just be, be patient and walk with me. Walk with me on this journey to glorify Christ and expose Muhammad and his God. Chapter 2, verse 128. Our Lord, and make us submissive unto you, and of your seed, our seed a nation, submissive unto you, and show us our ways of worship, and repent towards us. What tub? So, in other words, don't be angry, turn towards us from your anger. You are the repenting. Anta al tawab. Now, those of you who know Arabic, am I lying? Fatabba al tawab. Tawab. Those of you who know Arabic, isn't this the very Arabic word for repenting, changing your mind, regretting, changing your course of action, yet it's attributed to Allah? See it? See? It's only the Muslims that'll explain it away. See? <clears throat> I didn't even know be which prophet you spoke Arabic, brother. I know you've been with me for a while, but I didn't know that. See? So when a Muslim says, hey, your God repents, so does your fake God, and your Quran confirms my Bible, so why are you complaining? Chapter 2, verse 160. Accept those who repent. Now here, no one's going to deny that when this verb, tabba, is used for humans, yeah, they repent. They change their mind, change their action, turn away. But it's applied to Allah, here. Same word. Who repent, tabbu, <clears throat> And make amends and openly declare, to them I repent. Who repents? Allah. at They repent, I repent. It's the same verb. Just like Allah prays, angels pray, Muslims pray. But when Allah prays, it doesn't mean that. You see what they do, guys? Are you seeing a pattern here? You'll show them, hey, uh, Allah prays, angels pray, and believers pray. It's the same verb. Oh, no, 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 no. When angels pray, that's prayer. When believers pray, that's prayer. When Allah prays, it means sends blessing. Hey, guys, it says that Allah repents and people repent. No, 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 no. When it says Allah does tabba or he's al tawwab, doesn't mean he repents. It's the one who accepts your repentance. Yeah, but the same verbs are used for people that repent. Yeah, they repent, but not him. Hey, guys. It says Allah is khayrul makirin, the greatest of all those who commit makir. And the word makir means deceit. No, the word makir means deceit when it's used of others, not for Allah. Are you with me there? I don't know what you're talking about, Christian guy. If you're going to manifest, that means you're a Muslim. I'm going to cuss you out, and I'm going to have the Shia on your mother. Okay, everyone got it? Okay, so there you go. 
Watch here. Then I repent. At-tabbu. Why? For I am oft repenting. I'm the one who's always repenting. Wa ana al tawwab. You can't get around this. You can't get around this. Okay. Do they not know that Allah accepts repentance? Now notice, that's the same word for repent. Okay? So when they do it, it's repentance. From his servant saying Psalms, and that Allah is the off returning. Huwa al tawwab. Oh, so when they do tawwab, that's repentance. When he does it, it means no, he accepts your repentance. Are you seeing how they're lying to you? Are you see how they're lying to you? Let's go through this, and then Lord willing, I'll have more in part two. I don't know how many parts it'll take. 9 one eighteen, And I'm responding to a Muslim, and this is one of my older articles because I got sick of this. This is why I say 99% of the objections have been answered on the website. Look for the answers. Exactly, King. You see what they did? They mistranslated it. All right. 9118. And to the three who were left behind until the earth became straight to them, notwithstanding its spaciousness, and their souls were also straightened to them, and they knew it for certain that there was no refuge from Allah, but in him. Then he repented. Tabba. Who? Allah repented. To them that they might repent. Liyatubbu. Anyone going to deny that they're repenting? But it says Allah repented, meaning Allah turned to them from his anger so that they would turn to him in mercy, in confession and acknowledgement. They were wrong. Surely Allah is the oft repenting. Huwa al tawwab. Hmm. You caught it? Because they're their father, the devil. They're going to lie, entertainment. Now watch here, though. I already anticipate their objections. So his Muslim, this clown, that's that fat porker who got arrested for child pornography, Menj. Right? Menj may wish to deny that Allah literally repents from doing certain things by changing his mind. And just in case he does, we will simply quote what the Quran says Mo Moses commanded his rights to do. Now watch. He's going to say, well, hold on. Allah doesn't literally repent. Okay, let's see. Let's see, okay? Watch here. And remember, we appointed 40 nights for Moses. And in his absence, you took the calf for worship. And he did grievous wrong. Even then, we did forgive you. Now watch. There was a chance for you to be grateful. And remember, we gave Moses the scripture and the criterion. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter of Uthman, the cow, 51-54. Catch a boy. There was a chance for you to be grateful. Remember, we gave Moses the scripture and the criterion. There was a chance for you to be guided right. Remember, Moses said to his people, O oh, my people, you have indeed wronged yourselves by worship of the calf. See, now you committed, sure, and Allah is about to destroy you. But turn in repentance, fatabu, to your maker, and slay yourselves. Kill those among you that fashion the calf. That will be better for you in the sight of your maker. Now watch. So when they did that, what did Allah do? Then he turned fatabba towards you in forgiveness. For he's oft returning. Huwa al tawwab. Wait. When they fashioned the golden calf and Allah wanted to destroy them, they acknowledged their sin and killed those who fashioned the calf and Allah repented from destroying them. Yes, yeah, here, you can call me right now. You can call me right now, brother. They're more hung up on pronouncing tawab, tawab, tabba than listening. Yeah, okay, brother. I'm glad that you want to call me. I hope you're interested in my pronunciation than the arguments. Okay, brother? Mike Winger is waiting for you. You want me to say tawab? I'm pronouncing it as an Assyrian. Tawib. But I hope that ha made you happy now. Are you happy now? Okay, brother. I hope you're happy. Thank you for wanting to correct my pronunciation. Tawabun. Tawib. I'm pronouncing it as an Assyrian. But you want to say Tawab? Al Tawab? Okay. Anyway, there you go.
Do we get rid of that guy? Thank you. Don't come back now. Idiots. They're more focused on me pronouncing the words correctly than on the arguments. You want me to say El Tawab? Tabba? No, I'm pronouncing it as an Assyrian whose mother tongue is Syriac, and we say Tawab, Tawabun, Tawab. I'm sorry that my pronunciation bothered you. Now, I hope now that the block will make you feel better because you won't have to hear it anymore. Now, return to your vomit. Piece of trash. He's more focused on the pronunciation. Did everyone get it, though? Let's Al Tawab. Huwa Al Tawab. Tayrun Makari. For that, hold on, man. That actually upset me. Let me shave my head again. Hold on. Yeah, Tobar. Stupid, dude. Stop the. Can we call you to correct it? No, can I call the Shia to correct <clears throat> the payment because they overpaid? Anyway. Okay, now here. So, what do the commentators say? When they repented, Allah repented. So, here's the commentators. Here you go. Tafsir al Jalalain. So that none of you were able to see the other and show him mercy, so that almost 7,000 of you were killed, and he will turn to you. See, when you kill those responsible for the calf and worshiping it, then Allah will turn to you. All right, still you're not getting it? All right, let's hear. Allah had sworn that he was going to destroy them for fashioning the calf. <clears throat> 7 152. Those who took the calf for worship will indeed be overwhelmed with wrath from their Lord. You see? Allah was going to pour out his wrath. But what happened? What happened, Allah? But he didn't do it. Why? Because notice the next verse. That's 7152. But those who do wrong but repent thereafter and truly believe, verily thy Lord is the, thereafter oft forgiving. Oh, he decided not to punish them. He decided to repent and turn away from punishing. So he changed his mind. Oh, she was a sister? Glory to Holy Church. She was a sister? I thought she's a guy. You mean Jesus is a, is a, is a sister? Oh, boy. See, that's what happens when you chime in. See? Now, see what happens when you guys chime in and I say, shut your mouths, your pie holes? Oh, she was a sister. Oh, damn it. Okay, let's unblock her. Can someone unblock her? Damn. See, sister, you women, dude. You you and your motherly instincts. That's not how you're going to get married. Can I just be a mother and correct you? I just want to help you be your help me. See, you guys can't shut up, man. Damn. All right, can someone unblock her? Was she blocked? See why I got I tell you guys stop distracting me. You see when you chime in, you're not helping me. Damn, man. All right, I'm sorry, sister. Do you only say El Tawab? 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 I'll say El Tawab. Huwa El Tawab. Did that make you happy, sister? Get stuck for Allah. Get stuck for Allah. Tell me about it, Gronya. Yeah? Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Auzubillah Muhammad Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Damn, dude. Blah, 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 huh, sister? I know, Lisa. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, well, did you get upset, Lisa? Oh, poor you. Blah, blah, blah. All right, poor you. Bye, bye, Lisa. So, did Allah repent? He said he's going to destroy them for fashioning the calf. But when they repented, he turned and repented. All right. Now watch here. What's amazing about this is, this actually is the very story in Exodus that the Muslims use to show that God changed his mind. Did you know that? In Exodus 32... 10 to 14, Exodus 32, 10 to 14. Okay. 
Now I'm speaking as an Assyrian. I'm Assyrian. We say Tawab, Tawabun. Oh, but no, you got to say El Tawab, Tawab. Say El Tawab, brother. La 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 la. La la la. All right. In Exodus 32, 10 to 14, God says to Moses, Leave me alone. I'm going to destroy them for fashioning the golden calf. Moses insisted, and it says that God repented of bringing the calamity on Israel. He goes, see, your God changes his mind. But you know what's funny, guys? Here's what's funny. The Quran quotes the same story that Allah wanted to destroy the Israelites for the golden calf. But when they repented, he repented and changed his mind. Talk about God humiliating them, embarrassing them, and having their own argument implode in their face. Uh, Shanika, here's how you do it, Shanika, here. Here you go, okay? That's how you answer them. You got it now? Okay, now let's go here. All right. Here are other examples of Allah repenting. Allah also repented for destroying the people of Jonah, which again is an echo of the biblical story. Okay, watch here. If only there had been, a, that's by the way, us Ninevites, by the way. We Ninevites. The great city of Nineveh, the emperor of Assyria, Exodus 32, 10 and 14. Jonah did not want to go to the Assyrians. He wanted God to destroy the Assyrians. Now, one look at Sargon D. You haven't seen his face. The dude is like, what, six foot one, two, receding hairline. And if ugly was a crime, him and David Wood, an apostate prophet, would never see the light of day. You see why Jonah wanted my my people, my ancestors destroyed. We are descendants of the Ninevites, the Assyrians. You Chaldean haters, you're Assyrians. Live with it. Sons of Asher. So Jonah could not stand my ancestors, just like many of you can't stand us because we're that good looking. One look at me and see why he wanted us to be destroyed. But when Nineveh repented, God relented from destroying them. The Quran confirms the story. Here's a story of a man named Brady. If only there had been a community of all those that were destroyed of old, that believed and profited by its belief, as did the folk of Jonah. When they believed, we drew off from them the torment of disgrace in the life of the world and gave them comfort for a while. You caught it? We drew off, meaning we relented. We changed our mind. From destroying them. And here's how some of the commentators explain it. Chapter 10, verse 98. Tanwir al Mikbas, min tafsir ibn Abbas. When they believed, we drew off. We diverted the severe punishment. Okay, tafsir al Jalalain. When they believed, after seeing a point of the chastisement, we removed from upon them the chastisement of degradation in the life of the world this world and then again on the parallel story right here on Nineveh Ninui, and they believed after they saw the chastisement which they had been promised see we promised to destroy them but what did you do you relented you repented you diverted it hmm. well what about Ibn Kathir Tafsir Ibn Kathir so they cried to Allah and asked for help. They brought their children cattle and asked Allah to lift the torment which their prophet had warned them. As a result, Allah sent mercy and removed the scourge and gave them respite. That's repentance, folks. That's repentance, people. Prime. It means I'm not an ugly bastard that looks like you. You look like a dog. No disrespect to dogs, you piece of garbage. Put on you, you ugly bastard. No disrespect to ugly people and bastards. All right, now, look what else he goes on to say. When they lost their prophet <clears throat> and they thought that the scourge was close upon them, see, they thought it was coming on them. Allah sent through their hearts the desire to repent. So they wore woolen fabrics and they separated each animal from its offspring. They then cried out, to Allah for 40 nights, when Allah saw the truth in their hearts and that they were sincere in their repentance and regrets, he removed the scourge from them. 
Oh, so Allah repented, relented, changed his course of action, diverted his wrath? Damn. Now, to prove to you that these words here, I'm going to pronounce it to make you happy. Okay, how do you want me to pronounce it here? El Tawab. El Tawab. Is that how you pronounce it? You don't want to say El Tawab? You don't say El Tawab? Okay. El Tawab. Tabba. Fatabbuhu. Akhet, akhet, akhet. All right. Let me show you how. The same words, tawab, tab, tabba, use of Allah is used for others, which no Muslim denies, means to repent. Here you go, chapter 2, verse 222. Okay? Ready? Okay. When they have cleansed themselves, then come unto them as God has commanded you. Truly, God loves those who repent. Same word. One of 90, Allah's 99 names. Al-Tawab. Al-Tawabina. Al-Tawabina. Same word. Here, 4.16. And when two of you commit indecency and punish them both, but if they repent, same word used of Allah. Tabba, tabba. Oh, oh. All right. And make amends and suffer them to be. God returns and is all compassionate. 416. 1161. 1161. And one of the 99 names of Allah is Al Tawab, not Al Tawib. Don't say Tawib. I'm going to have to then be a mother figure and correct your Arabic. Even Allah couldn't speak Arabic. So why are you upset about it? 1161. Okay. Same words used of Allah, used for those who are commanded to repent. Here. 1161. It is he who produced you from the earth and has given you to live thereon. So ask forgiveness him and then repent to him. Same Arabic words, people. But when it's used of Allah, it doesn't mean repent. Who said so? They say so. Watch here. Chapter 25, 70 to 71. Pick thought. Save him who repenteth. Same word used for Allah. And believe in and do doth righteous work. If you repent and do good, Allah will have mercy on you. As for such, Allah will change their evil deeds to good deeds. Allah is ever forgiving, merciful, and whosoever repented and doeth good, he verily repented toward Allah with true repentance. You see? Same words. Sister, am I saying it right right now? I just want to make sure. Are you happy? Tawab. Al-Tawab. Is it Tawab? Not Tawab? All right. All right. Now here. Final one. Chapter 66%. We're going to end it here. Lord willing, I'll do a part two sometime this week. We'll see what I'm going to do tomorrow Sunday. 66 verse 8. <clears throat> Believers, turn to God in sincere repentance. Okay, same word. Tawab, tap, tabba, tapa, 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 shalalala. So if you repent, Allah will repent. These are the same words used for Allah here. Let me find a clip by Sheikh Asim al Hakim where he says one of Allah's names is Al Tawab. Tawab. Here you go. Here you go, mister. Does it use it for Allah? Here you go. Then he turned. Allah turned. For he is aft returning. El Tawab. So I'm pronouncing it. Tawab. Am I pronouncing it all right? Because if I say El Tawab, see, you don't know Arabic, Sam. You don't even know English. You don't know English, Sam. You thought, Sam. There you go. Now, let me show you. One of the 99 names of Allah. One of the 99 names of Allah is El Tawab. Hi, Thaler. Let me show it to you, Thaler. 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 Let's go in the second article, which is in the description box. You're such a gorgeous bee, Thaler. We were Thaler alone on a moonlight bay. We were Thaler alone. 
on the moonlight bay. We were sailing along on the moonlight bay. Here it is. This is my response to Ibn Underwear, who went defunct. Ibn Underwear. We're going to be looking at this as well. We were sailing along on the moonlight bay. Ricky, Lord willing. Uh, don't go away your location, but I'll be coming there for your event. Ricky is the guy who's going to be getting baptized in the Catholic Church with his future wife. Not Catholic Church, I'm sorry. Orthodox Catholic Church. My apologies. He's getting baptized, him and his future wife, in the Orthodox Church on Lazarus Day, right? Exactly, Nemesis. But hold on. We were saying it all on the moonlight bay. All right, here you go. This is a response to Ibn Underwear, a.k.a. Ibn Anwar. Here it is, the meaning of the word tawab. ta -wa -ba. Did I say it right, sister, or are you going to beat me down? I'll be there, Lord willing. ta -wa -ba. ta -wa -ba. ta -wa -ba. What does it mean? To return, repent, turn oneself in a repentant manner with ila, ila or without it. Turn with mercy, with ala, adapt. Tabba. All right, there you go. All of here, right? It shows you the word. But the tham, you're not pronouncing right. So it only matters if you pronounce the right. If you don't pronounce the right, then your argument is a moot point, tham. You got to pronounce the right, mister. All right, so there you go. Now let me go to the now. Sadly, Aisha Buley's website is down. Now I give you Arabic lexicons like Edward William Lane and others. What does the word mean? God returned. You see, they even translate it as return, right? Towards him. Became again forgiving to him. Returning from, reverted from, returned, became again, returned towards. See, that's when it's applied to God. Applied to man. Repents. Returning from. Right? One who returns much or often. Returning from. You caught it? Now here. These are Arabic lexicons. Hans Wer. Dictionary. To repent. Be penitent. To turn from. Be converted from. So there you go, right? Now watch here what I quote. Abu Jafar said, regarding the explanation of Allah saying, indeed he is most forgiving and most merciful, means that Allah is the goy, the typos are in, the response to Ibn Abi Anwar from his post, I'm quoting his own sources against him, who is most forgiving to those who wish to repent to him by giving full obedience to him and rebelling against him. Now watch, this is one of the sources that Ibn Underwar quoted. This is the meaning of the tawbah, Toba of a servant to his Lord. Whilst, or whilst the meaning of Allah's toba upon a servant is that he forgives him and protects, preserves him. So notice it's admitting the servant does toba and Allah does toba. Now, the 99 names of Allah provided by Aisha Buley, a convert to Islam. Now, the website is defunct, but you can still find it on archive. Notice two of his names. At Tawab, Qabil, at Taub. This is the one who accepts repentance. This, Qabil or Qabil. You want me to say Qabil like Habil? See, in a certain we say Qabil. He accepts. Qabil at Taub. He who accepts repentance. That's one of his names. But he also has this name, at Tawab. Allah turning to man is by pardoning him. One who returns often to forgiveness. Allah returns, changes often to forgive you. Towards the, who returns to him. So if you return to him, Allah will return to you. One who forgives much and saves from acts of uh, disobedience. Who reverts from severity to mildness or returns to his favor. See how we just buried the Muslims? 
So what's your problem with the true God? Repenting, regretting, relenting, which actually proves his consistency. When your fake God repents, relents, and turns, yeah, sight disappeared, actually. It's no longer working. Here, let me prove it to you. So, Lord willing, we'll have more in part two, Lord willing. And so, all the articles are in the description box, right? And you can find here. So, here's his response. Look, where is he? Oh, oops. I guess he repented. I guess he relented. I guess he did toba. Toba. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Masihi Shachzot at Tawab is an action that Allah does. Kabul, right, means He accepts your action of repentance. <laughs> I guess He did Tawab, Tawba, Tawib, Tawb. However the hell you want to pronounce it. You say tomato, I say tomato. You say potato, I say potato. Let me see if I can find, and we'll be done. Let me find our friend, Sheikh Asim, saying that Allah repents. Let's see. Let me find it. Sheikh Asim. What are you doing, man? Allah repents. Okay, let's see. Are there any signs Allah's accept our Allah name? Tawab. Let's see if we find it. Aha, we found it. Get stuck for Allah. Get stuck for Allah. But it's too damn long, dude. Damn. It's too long. Let me see. Yeah, it's too long. I can't do it. I'll play it tomorrow because it's going to be too long. Here it is. He even says it. One of his names. It's too long. It's a 40. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'll find you. Right here. See? At Tawab. Tawab. Sound constipated, don't I? Let me see. Damn it. All right. I'll find it tomorrow. I'll play it tomorrow, Lord willing, if I do it tomorrow. Okay. Everyone good? I hope you enjoyed this session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> All right, anyway. guys, we're done. Pray for me. Pray for my daughters and I. Please, you prayer warriors, be committed to praying for me. Because, you know, people hate me, want to see me out. Our lives and ends of Jesus. Pray, Lord, grant my daughters and I miraculous, divine, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, health. Ask God to give me miraculous discipline, spiritually, physically. Engage in intense spiritual disciplines, physical ones. To get healthier, to get leaner, to get fitter, to get holier. And my daughters fall in love with Jesus. And the Lord brings them to me. I haven't been with them in years. I haven't hugged them and kissed them in years. I haven't done life with them in years. The Lord does that miracle. Bring them to me and provide for the ministry. Because you know I'm going to get people to unsubscribe. Stop support because I'm now Catholic. I want to be the next Pope. And I love the Queen of Heaven. You know, Goddess worship. I'm worshiping Ishtar. Pray God will sustain me to be a man of integrity. To finish the race and glorify the Lord. And provide for the ministry and provide through me for my children. And God, keep me pure until marriage. And the Lord, bring about his will in my life for the glory of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Lord, and I'll be back later on Sunday.
Pray I get to church, practice what I preach. The Lord won't get to the Holy Eucharist. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again, physically and bodily. Lord Jesus, wash us, our loved ones, my daughters. Bring them to me. Wash us in your precious blood. Seal us and fill us by the Spirit to never shame, betray, or deny, or blaspheme your name, Lord Jesus, but love you even unto death, until your turn. Save me from my vices, my weaknesses. Save us, Lord. And help us truly love you and not to live double lives. We need you, Lord. Bless this ministry. Close the door of censorship. The work you've begun in us, complete it until you return. And we love you, Lord, because you are real. You are reality. And we love the holy saints, your holy mother, the holy prophets, the holy apostles, the holy angels, because they are your companions. They love you. And those who love you, we love them. And those whom you love, we love, because we love you, Lord Jesus. And we adore your mother. May she intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Maranathe. Amin. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care, guys. See you soon. Lean fighting machine, baby. Ow! Oh, the Muhammad Rajin. Bismillah, Rahman.